University of Virginia Health System, we're for sharing the latest health information from top minds to keep you and your family healthy. With UVA Health System Radio, here's Melanie Cole. Glioblastomas are the most common and most aggressive type of brain tumor. What treatment options are available for patients with these fast-growing tumors? My guest is Dr. David Schiff. He's the co-director of the UVA Neuro-Oncology Center. Welcome to the show, Dr. Schiff. Tell us what is a glioblastoma and what makes this tumor so harmful to patients. Melanie, glioblastoma is a type of uh, cancer that originates in the brain substance itself. Many brain tumors are secondary, meaning they've spread from other organ sites in which the tumor originated. For example, people with lung cancer, breast cancer, kidney cancer can have tumors spread to the brain, and we call that brain metastasis. The glioblastoma is a cancer that arises from the supporting cells in the brain itself. Um, there's a roughly 10 to 12,000 diagnosed each year in the United States, and uh, there's a number of things that, that make them very tough to treat. One, of course, is the real estate, uh, the location in the brain, because there are many parts of the brain that are absolutely absolutely crucial to our functioning. Um, another very important reason these are such difficult tumors is that even when the tumors look well localized or circumscribed on the brain, so that it, and if they're favorably located, perhaps a surgeon can remove the visible tumor, the problem is that these tumors invariably put out little microscopic fingers or tentacles into the surrounding healthy brain. Those tentacles are invisible. The surgeon can't see them. And unlike some other parts of the body where the tumor can take a, some extra tissue around the tumor, you know, a margin, as we say, to try to be on the safe side, that's just not feasible in the brain. So even when these tumors are favorably located and the surgeon's able to do a great job with it, there's always tumor cells left behind after surgery. So now, Dr. Schiff, people, you know, they get headaches, and right away, this is the kind of thing that they worry about when they get headaches. So tell us some of the symptoms, something that might send somebody to the doctor to check for such a thing. It's, it's pretty scary, and people want to know what might they feel. Yeah, well, fortunately... Uh, almost everybody in the, in the world has had a headache at one time or another, and many of us get headaches pretty frequently. And fortunately, only a minuscule fraction of all the people with headaches have headaches related to brain tumors. Um, probably uh, about a third of patients with glioblastoma initially come to medical attention because of headaches. So headaches certainly can be a sign of brain tumor, although, as I said, that's, that's you know, in the world of people with headaches, brain tumors are a very uncommon cause. I think the big, the big thing to keep in mind is that a change in a longstanding headache pattern or the new development of headaches in an adult, particularly someone who's middle-aged or elderly, uh, may warrant some attention. So headaches are, are one symptom. Um, other symptoms include things like personality change, people just sort of losing interest in their favorite activities and kind of being a little bit like a bump on the log, withdrawn. Um, sometimes uh, people uh, present to medical attention because of some weakness or clumsiness on one side. They may have some facial drooping or slurred speech. They may start dropping objects with a hand. Sometimes vision on one side is impaired so that people may bump into objects on one side or the other. So those can all be, and, and occasionally related to that, people may start to have driving accidents because they're not seeing things on one, on, on one side of the road. So those are the sorts of stories that uh, you know, patients in our clinic typically come in with. So maybe, you know, loss of vision and changes in personality, behavior. So now they've come to see you and you've diagnosed them. Now, what are some of the treatment options that are available? And, you know, surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, because you've described those fingers, and maybe margins are not able to be gotten. Explain what the surgeries are like, and then what they can expect after. Right. So the, the, the first thing is typically uh, the patient, by the time he or she comes to us, They've had a CAT scan or an MRI that shows something that looks like a lump in the brain, 
and then they come to me and my neurosurgical colleagues, and we have to figure out what the next step is. And we don't, sometimes we suspect that the lump is a glioblastoma. Um, sometimes we're honestly not sure. We usually have an idea whether it's a tumor or not, but there's other types of tumors, as I mentioned. So the, the first step is to make sure there's no obvious signs of tumors elsewhere in the body. So if somebody has a history of cancer, we examine them, and sometimes we may get a chest X-ray or a CAT scan of the chest and abdomen to make sure we don't see any tumor there, to make sure this isn't what we, the lump in the brain that doesn't represent spread from from somewhere else elsewhere in the mm-hmm. body, right. Um, once we've done that, and we don't, assuming we don't see anything suspicious below the neck, then the next step is to make a diagnosis to get tissue from the lump in the brain. And there it really boils down to, should the surgeon make an attempt to remove as much of the tumor as can safely come out, or is the tumor located in such a delicate place that only a biopsy can be done? And that's a decision ultimately that's up to the surgeon in discussion with the patient because sometimes if there's potential risks of doing a more aggressive surgery, obviously patients need to be involved in those discussions as to how much risk they're willing to tolerate. So at the UVA Neuro-Oncology Center, what treatment options are you offering? Well, so uh, the, the, neuro, the, the tumor neurosurgeons and the Tumor, the, the neuro, medical neuro-oncologists like myself who, who don't do surgery but choose from the other therapies available, we generally see the patients together at the same time in clinic and we figure out first what the surgical approach should be. Now, if, if the patient has undergone total or partial removal of their tumor or has only had a biopsy, the next step we generally have to wait a few days for the pathologist to do their work with a specimen to render a, a diagnosis. And then we meet together with the patient and the family to discuss the diagnosis and to discuss treatment options. And a, a couple of things about the, about the surgery. There are some bells and whistles that can be done to make the surgery uh, safer and more effective. Uh, so among the things we do at UVA uh, include, first of all, we have an operating room suite that has an MRI in it so that during the surgery, the surgeons can have the patient undergo an MRI to see if they've gotten everything that they want to get out of the brain before putting the skull back on and closing the skin and sending the patient to recovery. So that can be very helpful in maximizing the amount of tumor that's safely removed. The other thing our tumor neurosurgeons do is they do functional mapping of the brain so that they can record signals from the brain while the patient's asleep in the operating room to make sure they're not taking out areas that are important for movement or sensation. They also have the um, ability to do what we call awake craniotomy. In other words, a surgery where the patient's put to sleep initially to have the skull opened, but the patient can be awakened for parts of the surgery so that the surgeon and psychologists and physiologists can test the patient while the patient's awake to make sure that areas of brain tissue that the surgeons would like to remove are not performing vital functions that the patient's not going to be happy about missing when he or she wakes up. So Now, Dr. Things, Schiff, yeah. and in just the last 20 seconds, if you would, kind of wrap it up about the center and give some hope out there to people listening. Right. Well, while glioblastomas are very aggressive tumors, our our clinical focus has been on uh, doing clinical trials of novel therapies to improve the outcome. And in fact, two of the therapies tested here in the last five or six years, one of them being a vast bevacizumab, one of them being the Novacure TTF device, have been approved by the FDA. So we have seen some real progress during our time here. Thank you so much. You are listening to UVA Health System Radio. For more information, you can go to uvahealth.com. That's uvahealth.com. This is Melanie Cole. Thanks for listening.